In this unit, we're going to look at using CSS to control the layout of elements in your web page. To use CSS for layout effectively, we first need to understand the CSS box model. Browsers consider all HTML elements to have a box, with properties such as width, margins, padding and background that can be manipulated through CSS. This gives us very fine control over the appearance of any element. So let's consider those properties in a bit more detail. The easiest way to see the box of an element, such as this paragraph, is to set a border. Now, With the default border shown, we can start to show the different kinds of properties we have access to. So, for example, we can set a different border width, measured in pixels, border style, such as solid, dotted or dashed, and border colour. Now let's look at padding. You use this to control the space between your content and the border. And again, if you wish, you can set this independently for left, bottom, top, and right. The margin sets the spacing between the element's border and adjacent elements. Once more, all margins can be set to the same value, or set independently for the left, right, top and bottom margins. The background property controls the fill of the box. By default, this appears transparent, showing the colour of the underlying page. However, we can set it to be a solid colour, a gradient, or to be filled by an image. And finally, we can set the width of the box. By default, elements occupy the full width of the page, or containing element. Setting a smaller width in pixels or percent reduces the width of the box and lets other content in the page flow around it. So when thinking about the layout for your page, consider elements as boxes. You might even want to draw these out, a process called wireframing, to give you an idea of how it will look. Once we've designed in just boxes, we can then start to add in our content and the added complexity that brings to our designs. An important concept in creating boxes is the use of div tags. These page divisions simply group HTML elements into a single block without changing their appearance in the page. The divs can then be styled in your CSS, applying the styles to all elements within the div. So let's look at using the CSS box model in Dreamweaver. Here we have a simple structured page with some basic CSS style. Let's select a section of the page and group it by adding a div tag. I'm doing that through the layout category of the insert toolbar. We'll give the div a class so that we can target it and let's call it facts. You can see that Dreamweaver automatically highlights the box of the div in the design view though the actual page style hasn't changed. Now let's add some styles to change the box properties of this div. With our div selected we can add a new style rule to control its appearance. In the CSS rule definition window we use the box category. Here you can see and change the box properties for the selected element. We'll start by setting a width, 25% of the page, and you can see the box has been resized. Now we'll apply a right float, which as the name suggests, makes the element float to the right. The div is starting to look more like a sidebar now, which is what we're after. So let's carry on and add some padding and some margins, 20 pixels for each. If we return to the page in design view, you can see that Dreamweaver draws the box model for the element and you can inspect the measurements of this by hovering your mouse over it. Let's carry on now and add a border with solid style, a width of 10 pixels and a white colour. Finally, let's add a background colour to make this stand out a bit more from the page. So with some simple changes in Dreamweaver, we've used CSS to create a pretty distinctive sidebar for our page. And of course, you can use the same approach to create and style boxes for all the elements in your page, giving you that fine control over layout and style. So, practical time, where we want you to go away and try this for yourselves. Work through the tasks and add some CSS to your pages to explore how you can use the box model to control the layout of your page.